Hi guys! So this is my first vlog, vlog, for English class. And I'm hoping it's gonna like work out because I'm not good with technology and a lot of you know that. So this is my vlog. I thought I'd make it a little more interesting than just like typing stuff up because it doesn't seem interesting to me. So I'm doing this instead. I was just going to discuss um, this book that we're reading for English class, Interpreter of Maladies, which is just really a collection of short stories. Um, and so far I am really liking them, and I thought I would discuss my favorite so far, um, The Third and Final Continent, because although we've been talking a lot about plot and structure and how stories begin and end and how it doesn't always have to be like a happy ending, I'm still a sucker for the average happy ending. And this story had that. So, I just really liked um, the way the story was written. I, I thought it did very well as a short story for kind of... I'm never, I guess, really a big fan of short stories. But this one was really interesting. Um, it was very well written. Of course, if you've been keeping up with my blog, you know that that is a necessity for me. It was very well written. And I very much enjoyed um, the descriptions and the writing style of it. Um, and I, I kind of thought for a while it could have been expanded into a longer novel, but I'm glad that it wasn't. I think that it, like I said, it did very well for it itself as a short story, and I like it kind of to stay like that. Um, it was kind of like just the right length. It was just the right amount of... And of course I just um, I just absolutely loved the character description um, of... Sorry about that, I had to change the lighting. Anyway, I loved the character development of Mrs. Croft. I mean she was just like <laughs> the best and I just loved the imagery of this like um, kind of soft-spoken, you know, I mean, he works in a library, so he's kind of, he's, he's got to be a little bit of a quieter character, and he's just kind of, you know, sitting with his posture, like, very posture, and he's kind of looking around, and Mrs. Croft is just like, SAY SPLENDID! And he's like, SPLENDID! <laughs> it's just the best image of this, like, such a mismatched pair, and I really loved kind of the way that these two characters interacted throughout the story. Um, and then also, that changes. Um, they still interact the same way. I mean, it changes a little bit. But then, um, you know, once his wife comes into America, then things change. Um, I mean, for him and for her. And so this is another reason why I like the story. Not to say that there isn't symbolism, because I think there's definitely some symbolism at play here. But it is, in some ways, just a story. There's no rice-eating and boy-killing monkeys in this story, which is kind of nice to not have to deal with that. It's just simple. It's, it's, um... On the surface, it's a nice story of um, a man who moves to America. And um, as the, the title of the story may convey the third and final continent, that is the third place that he's lived. And it seems to me as though... I suppose it seems to me as though that is where he's happy. Um, and I think... The way I interpreted the story, branching off of that, is that he was born in India, and that's where his roots are, and that's where he's from, and that's where he identifies um, himself with, if that makes any sense. And then things change for him, and he kind of feels the need to extend and... Um, move out of his comfort zone, or maybe see the world a little more. So, although he still follows many Indian customs, and he is still respectful of his heritage, he moves, and he begins this new life um, in London. 
And that goes on for a while, and then he suddenly becomes one of those men who moves out um, because his parents have decided who he is going to wed. So then he moves to America, and he has to make this this move, uh, which he seems to be relatively all right with. He doesn't seem too, you know, against it. Maybe he's a little excited to be going to a new place. Um, and he gets there, and he stays at this YMCA for a while, which kind of sounds miserable. And then he meets Mrs. Croft. And suddenly he's in a place where he feels that he belongs. Because, yes, his existence up until now has been stable, more or less. Um, and he's been to a few different places. I mean, he stayed at the YMCA, before that he was in that bachelor pad, and before that he was in India. And he likes traveling and seeing the world, but all of a sudden, this place that he had originally just kind of wanted to travel to suddenly becomes a home for him. And that is because of this kind of eccentric, splendid um, old woman who he later finds out is 103. And that kind of resonates with him. Because I think seeing means a lot to him. His sight, obviously there's a lot of description in this book. And sight is a big part of that. And the sight... I think to him is an important part of life because he has seen India and London and now the United States. But when he steps back and thinks about how much she has seen, that's like a big deal to him. He's kind of like, wow, she has been through so much. She's seen so much. And that's kind of the same way that I felt because when my great aunt Chris died, she was also 103. And she died in two, 2010, maybe. She died in 2008. Wait a second, no, that can't be right. I don't remember. I feel like she was born in the 1890s, but I just can't, for the life of me, remember. Either way, she was really old and she had seen a lot. That was just kind of a wow moment because she had been through two world wars, the Great Depression, and three centuries, and two millennia. And it was just kind of like, whoa, that kind of thing was really crazy. And so that was kind of a cool connection because I remember thinking about her the day after she died and just thinking, wow, I mean, what a full life to be able to see all of that happen. And that's kind of how he feels, I feel like. He's just in awe of the fact that she has seen that much and that he was able to be a part of that. And I think that's the hopes that he has for himself. And he hopes to see himself as a Mrs. Croft of sorts one day and been able to be everywhere and see so many things that have happened and changed the world. So... The lighting in here is so terrible, I just, I can't, I can't handle it. Anyway, those are my thoughts on The Third and Final Continent, so far my favorite story in the compilation, Interpreter of Maladies. Um, and so that is where I will end my blog, scholars.